With the summer concert festival season back to full swing, or at least mostly, many of you have asked about my current Yamaha YC stage setup. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to go through and detail how it's changed, especially all throughout COVID when things got really downsized. So now they're back to normal again. It's a good opportunity to talk about my streamlined setup with the Yamaha YC series of keyboards. Hey guys, it's Steve from Feather Light Studio, and many of you have asked about my current live stage setup with the YC and how it's changed over the years. And I'm no longer using the big rack with all the sound modules and everything. And the reason why is mostly because of the Yamaha YC series of keyboards. The big reason why all this downsizing is even possible is because of the YC's built-in internal audio interface. It takes all of your additional layering capabilities in your PC or your iPad and internally mixes them through the USB cable and spits it out the main out. This reduces or eliminates altogether the need for the additional wiring. And because of all of that digital layering and sound creation power, there's been kind of a return to analog on the sound reinforcement end of things, at least on stage, so I'm not constantly stepping through all those digital pages and menus during a live performance. These things are phenomenally good at creating a lot of sound and a lot of sound variation from just the one keyboard. And a lot of it is because of its layering capabilities. So I've done a complete video on those capabilities and I'll leave that in the links below, but its ability, for example, to map one of the sound engines to a separate hardware controller like the mod lever or something like that or to map it to an expression pedal or things like that, or to change the sound with velocity scaling. So all of these things add a huge amount of capability to the board that I'm just really kind of getting used to as an artistic tool. So when you buy a new instrument, you know, guitar, bass, keyboards, you have to learn how to use it. And there's a lot to learn on the YC. So the longer I've had this and the more I've toured and played with it on stage, especially bigger productions and things like that, I'm really beginning to learn the value of it being able to create so many different layers and things all on just one keyboard without having to have a ton of different rack modules off to the side or being stuck behind a bunch of different keyboards, like a jungle gym of keyboards where you're kind of secluded behind a cage. If you're a performing keyboard player and you sing and you need to interact with the audience and the other stage members and things like that, especially if you're up front like I am, it is really nice to have a keyboard that can do all of that without you having to be stuck behind a wall of keyboards or a rack of gear and that kind of stuff. And that is entirely due to the way the Yamaha YC series of keyboards allow you to not just layer the sounds, but get to them during a live performance. One thing working with my old rig has taught me, especially going through COVID and coming back out the other side when all the clubs started to open back up again, was there was a big advantage to having a really powerful but really streamlined setup that could play a wide variety of gigs and venues without my sound constantly changing from gig to gig. This new onstage setup is always in stereo regardless of the PA that I'm playing through, and it also includes my own personal vocal monitor that comes out of my sound reinforcement. I don't have to rely on the front of house for that. So we're backstage and we got 30 minutes between setup and tear down between each one of the acts. So we're waiting for the current one to finish up. And I thought I'd detail the connections to the back of the YC now because they've changed dramatically since I've had my previous setup. I no longer use the dual keyboard setup any longer and I no longer use the external rack with all the sound modules. So I don't have all those MIDI connections to have to worry about any longer because the YC is so good at layering those sounds and controlling them. So my connection's pretty streamlined now. I'm basically just down to my regular hold pedal. I have two assignable foot controllers. So the first one is actually, it's a moved foot controller. And it's just because it's really heavy. This is great for precision control. And I use this for all my effects related control. So for example, the wah effect on my clavinet and filter controls that I need to open and close, anything like that. This is great for that kind of stuff because it's really precise and it's heavy and it stays put. And then the other foot controller I use is for all my swell sounds. So this guy controls, for example, my brass sound that's underneath my electric or acoustic piano sounds when I need to swell brass in or if I need to swell a pad in or out. Now I could also do that 
by assigning that same sound to the mod lever or a hardware controller. But having both, you can even assign both of them. Having both gives you a ton of flexibility and spontaneity and freedom during a performance. So that's the second foot controller. And then the last set of connections is just a simple snake. I have a snake that's wired together and it's got my mic cable in it. And then it's got power to the board and then my two left and right audio outs to my onstage rack that allows me to control my onstage sound with my onstage EQs. And then the final set of controls or the final set of connections are the left and right XLR outputs that go direct to front of house. And these are a godsend. I no longer have to rely on each venue to have a high quality, maybe radio stereo direct box or something like that. The front of house guy just takes my left and right XLR feeds directly out of the DIs here on the board. They're hum and buzz free and they sound perfect every time. So just like my onstage keyboard setup has slimmed down quite a bit, my rack and onstage stand has lost a lot of weight as well. And I've tried a ton of onstage stands and stuff, but in the end, I end up still using the same thing every time, which is, this is actually an old ghetto waitress stand. It's built like a tank, it's solid steel, it's super light and portable, and more than anything, it's the exact height. And I never really did understand why someone couldn't just make a duplicate of this, Middle Atlantic or somebody, but anyway, it's the great, height for having an onstage rack. And my onstage rack now is literally just a two space rack. The entire thing basically got pared down to just two spaces. So it's a really compact setup. It's a dual 15 band EQ and it's an SM10 line mixer from Samson. Now there's a lot of line mixers out there and I've tried a bunch of them. And there's some ones from really good companies like Radial and some other people like that. But so far, this has really been the most compact and maybe versatile one that I've been able to use because for one, it's a stereo mixer and it allows you to actually have two different scents per channel. And that's a lot of capability in something that's just one space. It gives me complete control of my onstage monitors left and right. And having the dual EQ allows me to run my vocal through my setup first, and then it goes to front of house. So I'm not actually going through the EQs and everything to front of house, because that would add a lot of extra noise and stuff, but I'm just using a direct box, and this is one that I had modified over the years that has a, a sign mag transformer and some other stuff. It's basically just a copy of a radio, but it allows the front of house mic send that would normally go to my microphone directly on stage. I just plug into the back of this, and then out of the back of my send here, I plug it into here, and that allows my microphone to go directly to my onstage monitors, which means I have direct control over the EQ all the time at every gig. So my onstage vocal send never has to come through the front wedges, for example, or in-ear monitors. It's always coming to me out of the exact same place and it's always the EQ that I want. And if I run into problems or I run into a frequency that begins to you know, ring or something, I can pull it out right here in real time without having to get the side monitor mixture's attention or get the front of house guy's attention. It's quick, it's dirty, but more than anything, it's completely consistent. If we're playing a venue that doesn't use floor wedges or they're using an in-ear monitor system, like a worship setting, for example, I can just take my station's in-ear monitor feed and plug it directly into one of the channels of the mixer and use the headphone out on the mixer. The headphone volume control can be tapped at several different signal path locations. So the monitor, the effects, the mix, or the mains. And it allows me to have complete control over my own mix without having to rely on the front of house. And I still have control over the in-ear monitor station's feed as well. And the last part of the live setup is the two powered 12 inch two-way monitors that I use on stage facing me. Now these are just straight up Mackie Thump 12s. So they're not even necessarily high-end speakers, but they're incredibly bulletproof. And in a live gig environment where things are getting banged around a lot and you're playing a lot of different kinds of gigs, especially if you are packing your own stuff, these are definitely on your short list for sure because they're consistent 
and they sound great. And even the original configuration they come with sound great, but I did make one change with them. I took the original 12 inch drivers out of these and I replaced them with a flatter, more powerful speaker. And I'll leave that information in the link below so you can check that out. The ones they come with sound great. And they sound great for a multitude of different things, for PA use, for all kinds of things, but they're a little resonant in the lower mids to make it sound like they have more body and that kind of stuff. And that's probably fine for DJs or some other things. But for me, if you're really specific about the acoustic sound of your pianos, you might want a flatter speaker and they're super easy to swap out. Four bolts come out, the grill comes off, unscrew the main woofer, pull it out, disconnect it and stick the new one in. It really is just that straightforward. I've had mine for a while and Mackie's got a new version of these called the Mackie 212 Thump. They're a little higher wattage with a little different speaker voicing, so you might want to try those out. But there's a lot of speakers in this 12 inch two-way configuration that would obviously work. And I'll leave that info in the links below. So they're very straightforward. It couldn't be easier to set up. The snake that I have for the left and right speakers just plugs in there. There's the plug in from the mixer. You're good to go. You got a main volume control, you got a high and low shelf, and then you have a parametric EQ in the mids. And this gives you a lot of control just right at the speaker. And in addition, I have the two dual 15 band EQs on top of that. Even playing small gigs where you're packed into a corner or you're playing a wine bore or a smaller club, these sound great. They sound detailed, they're not muddy. But when you play larger gigs, if you're playing events and festivals and even tours, these can keep up with the loudest onstage sounds and still sound clear and detailed. And that's hard to do the bigger the gig gets because all that stage volume comes up as well. And that's important. The other thing is that these sit the same way on either side. When they're sitting in the vocal monitor position, you can actually have your left and right monitors be true stereo positions. The horn is on the outside of both of the speakers. A lot of these style monitors or powered monitors only have the wedge on one side, which means, you know, the horn is always on the same side. If you want a true stereo representation, you want the horn on the outside of both of your speakers in that floor position. So that's another reason why the thumps are so popular. I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything. They just make a great, super durable product that can definitely keep up with a lot of loud onstage sound and still be incredibly detailed. So as you can see, I've dropped a lot of size and weight in the keyboard department and I haven't had to sacrifice hardly anything to do it. And that's a lot of peace of mind when it comes to the gigs that you're playing. I can play a huge variety of gigs, everything from smaller wine bars to regular clubs and events, all the way up to full-size touring and concert gigs. And my setup remains largely the same. I don't have to restructure or wire anything to do different kinds of gigs. And that's a gigantic amount of peace of mind. To be able to walk in and have your setup be consistent from gig to gig is a lot like having a guitar player that gets used to a specific guitar and amp combination and then tries to eke out every ounce of creativity out of that. It really feels that way with this setup as well. And the more you learn about the YC series of keyboards, the more you learn they can do. So you don't need nearly as much gear to pull it off that you used to, especially in my case where I carried around racks of other stuff. So without a doubt, that's my single biggest advantage is not having to completely reconfigure my setup to play different kinds of gigs. Hey, if you learned something more, if this was helpful in any way, please hit the subscription and notification bells. It really does help keep the channel going. Stay safe. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Be creative. Add something creative to the world. It could really use it. We'll catch you guys in the next video.